Pleased to be joined now by the newest inductee into Canada's Sports Hall of Fame. I know there's a smile in there somewhere, Sheldon Kennedy, and there it is. Uh, quite the honor. How do you feel about it? Well, I mean, it is. Uh, it's a huge honor, and I, you know, I guess on, upon reflection, it's uh, just a lot of gratitude. I, I, you know, I never would have thought that Sheldon Kennedy would be any in any Hall of Fame or uh, receive any awards, and definitely. Uh, you know, not during my NHL career for sure, but uh, you know, we 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 come a long ways, and we you know we've managed to hang in there and and do some work around issues that carried a lot of fear, and, and thankfully that uh, I'm just so proud that people value the work that we're doing enough to acknowledge how important it is to say that uh, this deserves to be in the in the Hall of Fame, Canada Sports Hall. Of Fame. Listen, you've uh, you've helped thousands, and we can't say thank you to you enough um, as Canadians. Who who do you think of at a moment like this? Well, you know what? I have a, a very good friend of mine. Uh, uh, his name is Wayne McNeil. He's been with me from the start. He's uh, we have a uh, you know since 1998 when we rollerbladed across this country. Um, I think of Wayne. Um, you know, I, I also think of, I think of all the people that, that helped along the way. Uh, when we started talking about these issues, you know, 24 years ago, um, they weren't real popular. But mm -hmm. you know what, there was enough leaders within sport and within our communities to say, you know what, this is important and we're going to, we're going to make a difference. And I think that's who I think of. And I also think of all of the other athletes that have, uh, you know, brought their voice to the table you know, over the years. And, and I've also uh, think about how we've shifted the way we think about these issues. It's, you know, there's one thing about the incident and then there's another thing that what we really deal with and that's the impact. And the impact is real, even though a lot of times we can't see it. But when we talk about mental health issues, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of them come from uh, these types of incidences that happen to kids and, and you know, as, as, you know, young athletes or young students or, you know, whether it's in the family home or wherever it might be. So, you know, there's a lot of people that I think about, uh, Sheldon, you know, this hasn't been, you know, uh, my own journey as far as, uh, doing this stuff myself. I have a lot of people to help that have helped me along the way. You know, what we've learned is that sports has a platform. We have a platform to make a difference in our communities beyond sports. Sheldon, there must have been along the way, and, and listen, that's, I can only imagine the nature of the conversation when you began your rollerblading across the country in 98 to where it's at now. I would imagine along the way, there must have been some tentpole moments, some impact moments where you realized, hold on a second here, you know, this is taking root and we're eventually going to see some fruit because of it. What were some of those moments where Sheldon Kennedy said, that this is changing and for the better? Well, Jeff, I, one of the biggest fears that I had was that nobody's going to believe me when I was thinking I was going to tell my story. Yeah. And I'm probably the only person that this has ever happened to. And, uh, and, and I, you know, I was left basically with no choice that I need to tell my story or I probably wouldn't, you know, be around. So um, I did. And, you know, people believe me. And what I found out when my story uh, hit, hit the papers um, um, was that I wasn't the only one. We had received thousands, tens of thousands of letters mm. from individuals around the world telling their stories. And it seemed to be, you know, uh, you know, people wanted me to be that voice. I don't know if I've ever made a decision to say this is what I'm going to do it's people have kind of kept bringing me back into into this space to to be the voice and and i'm and i've been very honored to do that but uh that was one i knew i was never alone um the other one was um when i was rollerblading across the country um i received you know this conversation um had to happen outside of town in most places people didn't couldn't tell us what was going on in their in their life and, and uh you know they they had to wait till we were outside of town on the road rollerblading down the road and they would disclose to us something that was going on in their life and 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 what i realized is that this was not just about sexual abuse this was about all forms and all types of abuse and what i realized at this point was that 
you know, the, the type of abuse, the person, the place, the time was different. But the impact was, was very, very consistent as we went across the country and what people were struggling with, depression, uh, you know, mental health, anxiety, addiction. I mean, the list goes on, right? So, so that was another one. And then I think, you know, one of the big things was Jeff Natchuk out of the sport Manitoba saying, you know what, we're going to, we're going to make this mandatory training, um, you know, for all of our coaches. We, Wayne, my business partner and I formed a, a, a company called Respect Group and we, train coaches and parents, uh, school teachers and corporations across this, across this country. We've trained over 1.4 million people. Those were big points for us. And I think where we've really got to, and I think I kind of had a realization about five years ago, Jeff, is that when we first started doing this work, um, if you had a prevention program in place, uh, that meant you had problems, right, in your organization. Where, you know what, we're at a point now where if you don't have a prevention program in place, we're not signing up. So it's gone from, oh hmm. boy, we're not signing up because they have problems to basically a reten retention and a recruitment and an expectation uh, of an organization. That, that's outstanding. You know, and I, and then, and Sheldon, when I, when I think of you um, and you go in as a builder, and again, we all owe a big thank you uh, to Sheldon Kennedy. Um, I think you've been a light I think you've been a ladder. I think you've been a life raft. You've been a lot of things to a lot of people going back to when your journey began. What are you most proud of? Uh, well, I, I'm most proud of basically finding a way out of it, right? I think becoming healthy myself. And mm -hmm. I think for a long time I wasn't healthy. And I know even when I first started my, telling my story, you know, even though I was doing the best I could with what I had, I still had a lot of work to do because, you know, what I, what I realized quickly, Jeff, is that by telling your story, uh, it almost makes things worse until you can, you know, figure it out. And, you know, and I think by getting healthy, it's allowed me to shift the message from telling children's story to really being able to work with organizations and to be able to understand these issues, to be able to move and push legislation um, you know, we spoke, we spoke, uh, uh, at us Congress. I mean, we changed all, all types of pieces of legislation. And I think I would have never done that, uh, if I hadn't have a got sober and, and continually deal with my mental, my men mental health and, and the impacts of what happened to me. And I think, you know, those are, that's probably been the biggest gift and, you know, and I didn't get there alone. I mean, I had lots of people helping me get to that place, but, uh, um, you know, being able to, to, you know, have a family, I think is absolutely critical. And, and, you know, I have a new son in my life and, and, uh, uh you know, 22 months old. So he Great. keeps me hopping, right. Keeps things <laughs> real. And, uh, you know, it's, I think that, that is what I'm most proud of because the rest of it, um, I think it's important with these issues. We have to show people that there's a way out and that you can get better and that you can get well. And I think when I, when I, you know, when I think of Sheldon Kennedy and the issues that I represent going into Canada sports hall of fame, um, I think that that um, shows hope, hope for others, you know, not just Sheldon, but the issues that we represent that, you know, I mean, if I look at my career, I mean, I was best known Jeff for, going into treatment centers, mental health hospitals, psych wards, and being arrested, right? Mm -hmm. Who would have ever thunk Sheldon Kennedy would have ever been in a hall of fame? Like not very many people. So I think to me, when I look at it, that's important because what I know about these types of issues and, you know, a lot of the mental health issues that people struggle with is that they never believe that there's, that there's light at the end of the tunnel. They never believe right. that they can feel better or they can achieve that. So, you know, I think, I think that's what I'm most proud of and, and being able to stick with it. Those are beautiful words. Um, I do want to ask what's over your left shoulder right now. It looks like the dream catcher hanging on your wall right now must have a story attached to it, Sheldon. True or false? Very true. That dream catcher, uh, that dream catcher, I received that uh, in, uh, in, in, um, 
in Sydney when I was rollerblading across the country. And uh, I received that from an elder uh, lady. And, uh, and they presented me with that uh, to give me strength along my journey around the rollerblade across this country. Well, that dream catcher is probably four feet by four feet. And uh, it sat in the back of our RV all the way across Canada. Yeah. It sat in a storage room as I was trying to figure out where I was going to live. It sat in the Child Advocacy Center, the, the former <laughs> Sheldon Kennedy Child Advocacy Center, with 15,000 kids that had been through that, all at a level that they could rip it and tear it, and, it's, and it never broke. And so it is here in my office, right. and uh, it gives me strength every day. And I, I spent a lot of time, you know, getting well uh, in, in sweat sweat lodges and uh fasting and, and i spent a lot of time and and i think that the you know our indigenous culture gave me some guidance uh in finding a higher power and uh, getting sober it gave you strength uh and you and your work have given canadians uh strength for years uh before we conclude i i do want to ask you what does this honor mean to you sheldon well like i say i i think jeff like I, I didn't do this work to, to receive awards, but I'm, I'm absolutely proud and honored to, to receive this award um, for the issues that we represent. Because for a long time, the issues of abuse, bullying, harassment, discrimination never received any awards. And, uh, and I think that, you know what, it, it places a value and importance on on um, making sure that we're doing everything we can as a community and as a society and as a country to make sure that we're addressing uh, these issues. So that to me is what it what I feel um, um, this represents. And for me personally, um, I kind of go with the issue. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm proud, and uh, you know I'm proud, and, and it just it makes it. I think it you know. This gives you time to reflect of all the people that have helped along the way, right? And a lot of people. A lot of people. Uh, it takes a lot. Uh, and it takes someone to lead the charge. And that has always been you. Uh, you have made this entire country richer uh, for your existence and all the work that you've done. It's a great honor. Uh, we can't think of someone um, who deserves it more than you, Sheldon. Congratulations. It's a, it's a great look on you, Sheldon. Thank you very much, Jeff. I appreciate it.